In the criminal justice system, all defendants are innocent until proven guilty, either by confession, plea bargain, or trial by jury. This is one of those trials. You testified that you were facing the opposite direction, frozen in fear, watching Justin kill Kristen. You know, Danny, I'd love to talk about the whole truth and not just the parts that make you look good. Our form is different from the original form of the law and order. It's not the cops and then the DAs. Um, it's all about how the case gets made. Um, all the inner workings of the um, district attorney's office and the judges and the jurors. Please, you know in your heart he killed her. I'm not even sure she's dead. She could be in Japan or Brunei. She's dead. She's dead. She's dead. It's a look at law and it's a look at the courts in a way I don't think we've ever seen before on television. Our show is kind of the tactics. How do we get into a case? How do we prosecute the case? What are the ups and the downs? Where do we run into a wall, you know, a dead end? And, and how do, how is justice served? And I think that that's really the most interesting thing about our particular brand of law and order is that it's how we think. I'm just trying to put the bad guy away, not win the Nobel Peace Prize. You excuse those jurors because you thought they'd sympathize. Look, when you're first chair, you can have whoever you want on your jury. Latinos, lawyers, convicted felons, go crazy. Right now you support my choices, whether or not you think they're aggressive. Or cheap. It has cops in it and how they work with the DAs. And also, it may be that we'll know a little bit more about the people um, involved in the telling of the story. Uh, maybe. I need you to pull Abigail Phillips' phone records. Oh, the girl with the guardian angel? We're looking to tie the victim to some late night phone calls. I'm gonna need them today. No problem. I'm fast. That's what I hear. And all of the law and orders are basic whodunits, and so you're always trying to find out, you know, whether they're gonna catch the bad guy or not. I think our show is different because it becomes how the prosecution develops a case, how the defense develops a case to either prevent the verdict from being guilty or, you know, to ha make the verdict be guilty. So it becomes less of a whodunit and less of, of how you're going to make it happen kind of show. You know what I mean? How, how is it all going to, you know, how is it all going to fall into place? If I cooperate, um, will I have to go to jail? Have you broken the law? Oh, most certainly. I like the way they write for her. She's got a real nice uh, kind of wry sense of humor and a great compassion, I think, which is why she has stayed a district attorney for so many years. She hasn't gone off to the big fancy law firms as she's been courted by them because she's more interested in getting the bad guy than defending someone who might be a bad guy. Um, so that it's an interesting sort of obsession with honesty, I think, that she has. The jury already let him walk once. That's on me. Well, you can't retry him for killing Peluso again. No. But I can still make him answer for it. The great thing about most sort of law and order is it's always been about the case. It's been about the work. You know, eventually there'll be episodes here and there where you punch in on certain characters and get their backgrounds and lives. You know, Lenny, I was a precinct detective before I got shot five times. So if it wasn't for this squad, I'd be on permanent disability. I'd be retired. So don't kick a gift horse in the mouth. Well, it helps pay the alimony. Lenny Briscoe is retired from the police, and he's working for the DAs on what they call the DA's squad, where they use retired homicide detectives. I want to see your badges. We don't need no stinking badges. What? What did you say? I said, yeah, people need to see our badges. This has all kinds of workings of the judicial system that uh, we don't ordinarily see. And uh, I think it'll be very interesting. We've lost a lot. We've lost uh, not only a great actor, but a great man, a great human being. Uh, he was an inspiration to be around, and uh, we're going to miss him a lot. His friends told some great stories. He was a great guy. It was nice. I know he was being treated for something. He just never complained. I had no idea how serious.
as a tribute to him, there are, um, there's got to be a hundred people who work on the crew and in the building of uh, Law and Order Trial by Jury. Now this is a, a new show. He was in, I, I don't know, it was just a handful of the first few episodes. To a man, every single person, every single person in that building loved him. Okay. <laughs> they had 12 wonderful years with him on Law and & Order, and yeah. I think we got a little cheated, because the did. little bit that we got, we were really blessed with. We always said uh, ripped from the headlines, but I think this is sort of making its own headlines. It's a different look at law than you've ever seen. It's a different look of, at trying cases and the cases that America seems fascinated by. It's a murder, Your Honor. Ray Charles could have seen that, Counselor. You know, if, if you love the others, you're going to love this. Listen, everybody knows you were handed a crap case. Don't take it out on me. One thing that I appreciate about this show and all of the Law and Orders is it's really good uh, material that's got integrity. Still a lose-lose situation for Abigail. Some crimes don't end at sentencing, not for the victim. We do what we can.